There is a video on YouTube called Lunar Legacy. The film was produced by an individual called S. Vector. His film alleges that the Apollo moon landings were authentic, and anyone who voices the hoax theory is a con artist. The film itself was built upon a television transmission that supposedly proves the Apollo 11 mission went to the moon. The telecast in question has become widely known as the Little Gem. During the production of the Lunar Legacy series, Vector smugly boasted about how he'll shred the claims of fakery. What Vector didn't know was, I already knew what his little gem was. What's so special about this video is that during a segment, the Earth disappears behind the CSM's number one window, and then reappears through the triangular rendezvous window, window number two. Propagandists love this segment from the transmission, because at face value, it seems to prove that the camera was not panning to a cropped view of Earth through a circular window, as Bart Sabrell suggested, nor a backlit transparency clipped up against the window, as David Percy states. But when viewed in its entirety, this video fatally wounds their argument. S. Vector used this segment in his film. Unfortunately for him, his selective editing was not enough to convince conspiracy theorists, including myself. Just days after he refused my offer to state on the record that his little gem ultimately proved Apollo 11 was real, Vector released a second video, showing additional shots from the same telecast of astronauts jogging in zero gravity. But although a lot of the damning portions were censored, viewers quickly began to see why he was selective in his editing and demanded he release the whole video. Vector claimed he couldn't release the whole video because YouTube's policy prevented him from uploading videos longer than 10 minutes. A bald-faced lie, as at this point he had already released Lunar Legacy 4, which exceeded the limit by nearly 11 minutes. So why was he so afraid to release the whole video? I too have this footage. Initially, I planned on including it in my upcoming Moonfaker Exhibit C production. But then I thought, why wait? Upon watching it, I'm sure you'll quickly realise why Vector must cherry pick pieces from his little gem to get his point across. In researching this documentary, hours and hours of footage from the Apollo missions were analyzed. In viewing the NASA video reels, we noticed something quite unusual. If you remember, it was stated earlier that Apollo 11 sent three TV transmissions back to Earth during their trip to the moon. The first one came at 10 hours and 32 minutes into the flight. The last one came at 33 hours and 59 minutes in. Bart Sibrell and David Percy both show clips from these two transmissions in their respective videos. But wait, there was another TV transmission at 30 hours and 28 minutes mission time. Curiously, not a single frame of it was used in Bart Sibrell's DVD or David Percy's documentary. In fact, they don't even mention it. We wondered why this particular video was not included in their productions until we viewed it, and the answer became clear. Keep in mind, Bart Sibrell assures us, we are seeing a cropped version of Earth through a tiny porthole, and David Percy says, we are seeing a photograph of Earth taped to the window. Watch now, and you'll discover the clear reason neither of them wanted to show this TV transmission from Apollo 11 at 3028 mission time. It's important to note, the shot never cuts away. Let's hear it one more time. It's important to note, the shot never cuts away. The shot never cuts away. Now let's watch his little gem uncut from start to finish and see if that's a fact. Before we do, keep in mind that I have not edited this footage in any way. And if you don't believe me, you can get your own copy and find out for yourself. This footage came from Spacecraft Films.
Apollo 11, this is Houston, over. Uh, 11, this is Houston. Uh, Goldstone reports they're receiving a uh, uh, TV picture coming down from you all. Uh, a little snowy, but a uh, good TV picture, over. Roger, we're uh, just testing equipment up here. Roger. Ask them if they can read the numbers. Oh, okay, stand by. Uh, what's showing on the disc team also whether they can see uh, P R O D D E R V and the N O U N over. Uh, Roger, stand by a second. Goldstone, M N O, Houston, Capcom, over. Capcom, Goldstone, go ahead. Uh, Roger, did you copy the uh, base draft request? Uh, that's affirmative. I am reading the numbers on our monitor here. Okay, that's uh, Stemma. Roger, that's both the uh, the numbers on the disk itself and the uh, little words like uh, program, uh, verb, noun, computer, activity, things of the sort. Roger, I can read the numbers uh, clearly. Uh, we can't distinguish what the words are because it is a little snowy. Uh, Roger. Thank you. Okay, I read verb, noun, and program.
use the bottle lip. Go ahead, 11. Oh, Charlie, is that you? Uh, that's me. How are you there? Oh, just fine. How's the old white team today? Uh, the old white team's uh, bright-eyed, bushy-tailed. Uh, we're ever alert down here. Ever alert and vigilant. Hey, you got any uh, medics down there watching hard rain? I'm uh, trying to do some running in place down here, and I'm wondering, just out of curiosity, whether it brings my heart rate up. Uh, well, they will spring into action here momentarily. Stand by. Is it going to help out the PTC very much? Yeah, I don't know if it's a vibration or what it is, but uh, it makes the, uh, the pitch and yaw rate needles on the FDAI number one jump up down a little bit when we jump up down. Should be getting about the best picture of the earth we can get for right now, Tony. Uh, Roger, Mike. Uh, thank you much. Uh, we got a little distortion uh, in the horizontal direction uh, standing on our monitor. I wonder if they're getting the same thing. Uh, stand, by, stand by, Buzz. I'll let you know. Houston, the Goldstone 
TV people also see the banding when the uh, same time y'all do, over. Okay, would they call it a horizontal waviness uh, instead of banding, maybe? No, so I'm not talking to them directly. Stand by, Buzz. Let me see what they, how they describe it. Ghost on m &O, Houston Capcom. Could you put the TV guy on the loop, please? Capcom Goldstone, roger. Um, Goldstone M&O, Net 1. Go. Uh, the TV people do not have access to Net 1 in that area. I suggest we use Net 2 for that purpose. Okay, go into Net 2. Apollo 11, Houston, uh, the Ghost on TV guys uh, say that uh, they have some uh, horizontal banding uh, across the uh, upper part of the picture and across the uh, lower part. Uh, they would consider the lines just uh, straight, uh, no waviness to them at all, over. Roger, understand. They do seem to distort further across the line though. Uh, say again about the vertical lines, Buzz. Raj, when there's a vertical line, uh, these horizontal uh, bands tend to uh, put small waves in it. Uh, Raj, I copy. He didn't mention that. Uh, stand by. I'll check again.
Hello, Apollo 11, Houston. Uh, please select uh, Omni Bravo on board, over. Take on the Bravo, Johnny. Roger. How's everything going down there? You guys happy with spacecraft systems? All right, uh, affirmative. Everything's looking uh, really good to us, over. Okay, same here. How far out can you pick up TV off the Omni? Stand by. Apollo 11, Houston, we're just about at the limits where we can get any kind of picture at all on the Omnis on the TV. Uh, it's, uh, the picture, I guess, would be just almost zero at this point. Your attention, please. Please yell if you are paying attention. It's important to note, the shot never cuts away. Well, that's about all this is reasonable without getting hot and sweaty. All right, Rock, we got it. <laughs>